Both Kevin and I are part of the Eurasian Association and they regularly give us updates about cultural events and things we can enjoy to kind of connect with our community. So I've just graduated from university and I also have a dance background. So I thought that Chinge is the best way for me to both connect with my community as well as my dance background. Thanks to my dad, who was the go-to DJ for the Eurasian Association celebrations, I was then called up by my dad to actually participate in this Eurasian Association event which then I later found out that it was the Chingye event. I feel that being the main lead for the both of us is extremely nerve-wracking, especially with the fact that there will be many pairs of eyes looking at us. But I guess one consolation for me is that these pairs of eyes will be behind the screen, so it won't be so bad. So I feel the same way. So when I first arrived at the Eurasian Association, Someone just said, here's the bride, and I kind of freaked out. But I guess for me, it's both a form of pride as well as a form of anxiety. I feel very proud to represent my community, and I'll do my best to perform. Eurasians make up about 3% of Singaporeans, so our community is very small, very hidden, not very, very well known. So I think any opportunity to showcase our culture is great. So I think this is a great way for me to represent my community. As for me, I am quite proud that I get to represent the Eurasian society and to showcase just a small glimpse of what a traditional Eurasian wedding is like. So for the both of us, we prepared for the performance by seeking advice from the Eurasian Association Heritage and Culture team. And they suggested to us to perform the Eurasian themed wedding along with a song and dance which is known as the Jingli Nona. The entire contingent practices about once or twice a week, so it's not really that high of a commitment and I also feel if you're really passionate about something, you will make the time. How I managed my schedules was by devoting a night before the day of the training to practice a bit, to watch a few pre-recordings and that everything was pretty much smooth sailing from there. So the issue that I mainly faced was having to memorise the dance moves while executing them at the right time, which made it quite difficult. So how I overcame that obstacle was to ask my friends for help and they just told me one tip which was to enjoy the moment and that's how I managed to overcome that obstacle. I feel the same way and I think in addition to that, there were kind of quite a few revisions to the dance moves over the course of a few months and it was a bit difficult to keep on learning new things every week but I think after a while I kind of accepted that because I wanted the performance to be the best ever. I believe both experience for me was a pretty fun one. I found the studio experience to be quite insightful, having to see, witness firsthand the recording taking place and I can see that there are many considerations to take into account, such as the choreographing, doing up the makeup and even filming and directing the filming. So we had the studio element because we're kind of afraid that if COVID gets worse, we may not even be able to perform live. So as Kevin said, there were many interesting changes. We had to worry about camera angle and things like that. Things you normally wouldn't worry about in a live performance. I prefer the live element because I think performing in front of a crowd, no matter how small, is always very thrilling. So as I mentioned previously, I used to dance when I was younger and there was a break of about 10 years. But the moment I started dancing again, I felt so alive and happy. And so I feel like it's never too late to go back to your childhood passions. The other thing I realised is that you can never have too many friends, so I've met people across different generations. And as for me, unlike uh, Bernadette, I have not had any dance practice or dance experience before. So what I've learned is, is that I have to be adaptable no matter the situation. Because for, there were some occasions where I had to memorise dance moves, then forget about them and start acting and in fact do a bit of both. So that's where I learned that I have to be adaptable no matter the situation. One of them was being in the studio where I had a photo shoot, which I've never done before. And having a spotlight on you while having to execute certain poses was really quite an experience. We try our best to incorporate elements of a Eurasian wedding into the performance. So there's one moment where Kevin and I had to put rings on one another. And during practice, I got so overzealous one time that I just broke it. But thank God the ring was only $2. So my dream for Chingi is to have even more different cultures and 
backgrounds to come and participate in this Chingi event, such that it will add more diversity and vibrancy to it. Chingi is a very old tradition and so I really hope the younger generation will continue to appreciate it. Chingi also has Chinese roots but gradually over the years we've incorporated Eurasian, Indian as well as Malay elements. So I really hope that we will also incorporate younger elements into it as well.